Now, a lot of people talk about features, bleeding as technology, and so on and so forth. Let's actually talk about parts that focus on getting the job done instead of throwing unnecessary lights on your face. At the same time, are reliable. So step one, go for a workstation grade CPUs and GPUs. Now, Intel Core and AMD Ryzen CPUs are not workstation grade. While they do the job, they are probably not the most reliable. Now, a quick disclaimer. What is reliable actually? Now, reliable se matlab ye hai ki workstation level reliability. Probably failure rates are way, way lower than regular desktops. And that's why workstation use them. So, coming back to the video. Now, AMD Threadripper Pro is kind of ideal for multi-threaded workloads. Supports ECC RAM. Same thing goes with Intel Xeons. Optimize for stability in professional environments. CAD, virtualization. So, yeah. For reliable processors, HDD platforms are kind of more reliable. Probably not suitable for all use cases, but hey, we are talking about reliable stuff. On the GPU side of things, you got to think about NVIDIA Quadro, A6000s, A5000s. Now it's going to be called RTX Pro series. They have certified drivers for professional apps. And yeah, they kind of don't break with every, every driver update. On the AMD side, you have AMD Radeon Pro. They have robust OpenCL performance for compute heavy tasks. You might want to avoid consumer grade GPUs like GeForce or Radeon for really mission critical work. Because why? <laughs> because they are purpose built for professionals. They go through additional testing from the manufacturer to have the lowest possible failure rate. And this is verified from various system integrators. Threadripper, for example, has a failure rate of less than 1%. Less than 1%. This happens to be five times better than consumer grade chips. Now the big debate, air cooling versus liquid cooling. Now whenever we post a photo on Instagram with a high-end system with an air cooler, we get comments. Now to address those comments, let me answer this. Many air coolers actually have fewer parts, which means fewer points of failure. It practically doesn't require maintenance and has absolutely no risk of leaks. Now imagine if your AI leaked. Imagine that and it falls on your 1 lakh plus GPU. Do you really want that to happen? I mean, okay, fine. AIOs don't generally leak. But what if it does? Shouldn't your system design factor that in? So yeah, air coolers are, are worth the money. Now, recommended air coolers, of course, more heat types are always good. NHD15 has been a staple. Darkrock Pro 4 from Be Quiet is also really good. Very high thermal capacity. I would say avoid AIOs, pumps and tubes actually introduce more risks. Number three, skip RGB and gimmicks. Simplify your build, reduce cable clutter, minimize software and driver conflicts. Now, use non-RGB fans, NFA1225 or even Arctic P12. Avoid tempered glass cases and display panels. Prioritize functionality. Now, this really, really helps, especially if you're traveling. Tempered glass will probably always have a risk of breaking. I mean, there is a fashion of coolers and cabinets having display versions, but you probably should think of avoiding them because you always have a software running in the background trying to display that funny GIF on your CPU cooler, which you're probably not even noticing. I mean, it's flex wall This is, people are just going to flex. So do you really want to do that? I mean, it's all good if you want to, but yeah. The next thing is kind of counterintuitive. People always think that they want to get the latest and greatest. And we would say, try to avoid the latest tech if you really don't need it. Why you would ask? Now, new components don't really get the opportunity to be used by thousands of users and may have unresolved bugs and poor driver support. Because picture this, a system has 10 different components. Now, every component has to work flawlessly with each other. But you never really know if one thing is going to start acting up in a combination with the other four or five components. Something as simple as one SSD not working with a particular brand of motherboard. So yeah, rule of thumb, wait at least one or two months after product launch. Go through real feedback of users on Reddit, on social media. Maybe skip YouTube reviews because many of them are motivated, but hey, we are not pointing fingers. Now talking about reliability, you should really consider ECC memory if your workflow involves stuff in which reliability is a key factor. You may ask why. Now, error correcting code memory or ECC RAM prevents data corruption in critical tasks like rendering, training, or maybe just imagine 
that even the fourth decimal place can't be wrong in your calculation. So, or maybe the eighth decimal place can't be wrong. That's when you need ECC. Now, AMD 32 Pro and Xeon W CPUs natively support ECC. Avoid consumer CPUs without ECC validation for mission critical stuff. And while checking for compatibility, check if it's registered or unregistered versions where registered ECC memory has bigger storage capacity. Getting the right ECC memory can actually be tricky at times. So make sure you go through the specification of your motherboard. Typically on the motherboard page there will be an entire list of RAM sticks which are actually certified for usage. Now when it comes to power supplies you probably want a high efficiency power supply like MP plus rating but everything is 80 plus. So what do you actually buy? As CPUs and GPUs become more and more power hungry, 1200 watt supplies have become standard in workstations. At such high wattages Stable power delivery actually helps the longevity of your components in fact. So a minimum rating you should be looking at is 80 plus gold. Now platinum or titanium for peak efficiency and if you have extra money. Um, as far as capacity goes, calculate CPU plus GPU wattage and add a 50% headroom. Yeah, at least 50%. Now next up is RAID storage. You should really consider this for reliability or for good reliable storage brands like WD and try to set them up in RAID 1 or RAID 5. Now, this will make sure that even if something happens to one of your drives, your data is still backed up. Next up, really consider buying an airflow optimized case and go for regular maintenance. Go for a slightly bigger case which has good room for airflow. Some features to look at while getting the case is mesh front panel, support for more fans, 140mm fans because they run slightly quieter and yeah, have comparable CFM. Another good to have feature is obviously removable dust filters. Trust me, you'll need it. So what should be your final checklist after building a system? Probably stress test your system, monitor your temperatures, update firmware and drivers from official sources only. And all of this will make sure that your system won't crash. But all of this sounds like a hassle. Well, what if we told you that we do all of this and a little more? By giving you a three years of dose of warranty, even if something happens, we'll get it fixed for you in 24 to 48 hours. I don't think buying a workstation can be more convenient than buying it from us. So if you're looking for one, you visit our website or one of our stores across the country. If you like the video and what we do on this channel, keep supporting. Until next time, cheers.